So, Mark Cavendish, in a very, very busy year, has given us an hour of his time for a Q&A, which we should be very grateful for GCM viewers. So, his aims this year are the Olympics, the Tour de France, and the World Championship. So the first question has to be, if you can only have one, would it be an Olympic gold medal, would it be the yellow jersey, or would it be the rainbow jersey? I can't answer it, really, I can't answer one. It's like, the thing is, I might not get any. Um, and they're not my only aims for the year, it's just, they'll always be the ones that create the headlines, you yeah. know? Well, I've joined damn teams, I mentioned data, and I really want to win what I can, but I don't want to end up peaking. I want to end up peaking for July, yeah. and then again for, for October, you know? So, uh, I can't pick one, I might not get any. Is it, is it quite handy that everyone's focusing that those are your three aims, so they're actually not thinking about the other ones that you just said that you've still got in the back of your head? No, nah, not really. Because they, they forget it all the time anyway, you know? you got to remember that if I lose a race, I'm finished. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's always it's been like that after. Well, I'm nearly in my 10th year pro now. And for half of them, it's been like that. Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk to you about the, um, the new generation of sprinters. So you tweeted a couple of weeks ago about Gaviria, Caleb Ewan, the way they won their first races this year. Now, when you look at the footage, and we discussed on the G10 show recently, they're so low over the bike, and that's you know, fairly obviously them looking at you in years gone by and realising that that's a good way to go. So how does that make you feel, you know, seeing those young lads come up, seeing them in that same sort of position? Well, I know Caleb has. Both of them are super good guys. They love the sport. They're not just these strong guys that have been picked up in a laboratory or they absolutely have watched cycling since a young age, you know? I know Caleb studies it really, really a lot. I know he's been in the wind tunnel trying to get low, actually working on it. Gaviria, he's a track rider. He comes from the same background as me. Yeah. But I think it comes from that, you know? Does, does it give you extra motivation? Because I saw an interview with you recently where you said you're not actually sure where your motivation used to come from when you when you were younger. Yeah. So I'm wondering where it comes from now. Uh, it's more my kids where it comes from now. I just want them to be proud, you know. Delilah, she only understands I've done in a bike race by how if I've got flowers or not, yeah. you know. If you haven't got flowers, I'm bloody glad that's not how my kids understood <laughs> bike races. <laughs> so uh, that's what. <laughs> That's what it's like there, you know. Uh, she understands when I'm racing, she watches it. If I don't get the flowers, she's pretty pissed off at me, you know. Right from the very start when you began winning, you built a reputation for having almost photographic memory. So, as a test, can you talk us through the last K of your first Grand Tour win? I can talk you through the last few kilometers. It was in the Giro, and we just come onto the mainland from Sicily. We came along the coast down there in, uh, yeah, on the, on the toe of Italy. And uh, we came along, and we turned like this, which is K4, and we had this climb. And actually, I can't remember how long the climb was, but, uh, Wigo was in the team then, and Wigo stayed with me. We dropped back through the peloton, this climb, at the top of the climb. It's quite a long climb, it's a few K, like four or five K. And uh, there was cobbles at the top of the climb, and uh, Wigo stayed with me. We just got there, like literally five meters from the peloton. You can pretty much say we're in the peloton because by the next first corner of the descent, we're back on the back of the peloton. Then uh, there was a big, long, like, road. Had two, like, one side had two carriageways, one side had one, you know, but one road, you know, big, wide. And we couldn't descend it towards the coast. 
and the wind was coming from that way. Pelon was slammed there in the left, and uh, Wigo brought me up the outside of the group, right the outside of the peloton, and uh, there was a gap. I went to go in it, and Bettini moved, and I was like, oh, whoa, 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 Paolo. and he let me in. He let me in this gap. About 500 meters before the left-hand corner, we turned left onto the seafront, and we had just over a K to the finish, and it bared right along the seafront. There was a massive crash in the last K, and uh, I was on Bernati's wheel, and uh, Bernati hit out, and at the same time I hit out and came round this bearing right and uh, won. Oh, I don't reckon it's a photographic memory. I think he watches himself winning all the time at home. I, I don't think it's a, to be fair, Dan, I don't think it's really a photographic memory as such anyway. I can just tell you what happened. To be fair, I can remember my wins pretty clearly as well. <laughs> How are you going to know when to retire? Is it, is it planned? Or is it just something you're going to know? I think it's something I'm going to know. I think just when I wake up and I don't want to ride my bike anymore. But I really love riding my bike, that's the thing. Like, I have pressure on me to do things, so I do have to do specific training at times before races, but the majority of the time, I am just riding my bike. I go out with friends. I go out my own thoughts, I go out on my own. For me, the beauty of cycling was that you had the freedom to go where you want, when you want, for how long you want, with who you want, at the speed you want, you know? Yeah. And that hasn't changed now. I still go exploring when I'm and my training base in Italy, you know? The, the one thing that changed when you retire is being able to go at the speed you want. That's what <laughs> I found. <laughs> right, well, thank you so much for Thanks, taking man. the time out of the start of the season. We wish Mark all the best for 2016. Now, if you haven't seen the latest episode of the G10 show, all you've got to do is take just up there somewhere. And just down on the bottom left, you can see where we had a look at the Quebec bike, which Mark's just been talking about, back at the 2014 World Dance Vania. And to subscribe to the channel, the little box over there that says subscribe. Go out.